you don't have to live with pain or chronic neuro issues any longer. In this podcast, you will learn how to stabilize your brain, body, and biochemistry for the rest of your life. I'm Dr. Teams, and this is the Neuro Reset Podcast. Hey everybody, Doc Teams here. Welcome to another episode of the Neuro Reset Podcast. Today we're actually going to be doing something new. We haven't done this before. We're actually going to do a case review. So we see a lot of patients here with chronic neurological complaints, chronic pain, and chronic disc-related issues. Um, We treat them with cervical and lumbar decompression to rehabilitate the disc itself, and we often work with neurological rehabilitation so that the brain and the body can talk to each other. I wanted to share with you guys a case that we just had recently that was a really, really exciting case for us uh, because it had both the neurological and the spinal issues associated with this. So this particular individual was roughly, I'll say, 54 years old, uh, works as a in construction, we'll call it, um, and they're having severe low back pain. Severe low back pain, pain down at the back of the legs, and it can be bilateral, and there can be numbness in the feet as well. So we've ruled out um, diabetes and things causing blood sugar dysregulation, which often cause and start as numbness and tingling in the feet. So you'll have degenerative changes in the vessels and then degenerative changes in the nerves when you're dealing with diabetes. So we don't have that going on in this case. Now, interestingly, um, you know, when we do our history, we do an in-depth history. And when we bring that person in, everybody gets a neurological evaluation. If you stubbed your pinky toe on the left foot, if you've hit your head on the right, if you've had trauma, if you've not had anything going on except maybe a rough, hard labor life, every single person gets a full neurological battery of tests when they walk into our office. So the first thing we look at is the eyes because the eyes are the only sensory organ that allow us to look at the entire brain. Then we look at balance centers, which help us determine if there's proprioceptive, ocular motor, or vestibular issues, or all three combining or causing balance-related problems, which makes our nervous system not know where we are in space, and that causes fight-or-flight activity, as well as, say, muscle imbalances, which can lead to spine problems. And then the last thing we do is a metronome test. This metronome test is basically a timing test. So timing takes care of things like thoughts, takes care of things like emotions, takes care of things and controls motor activity, as well as timing of your autonomic system, right? Think like uh, you have a really loud sound and your timing is off and all of a sudden you freak out versus you hear the sound, you think to yourself, what was that? And you normally or naturally just kind of respond to it instead of react to it. So that's kind of our testing process. We'll go, we're getting ready to go in depth here. So if you're listening, I will describe what we're looking at and what it means. But if you want to go on YouTube and check out the all the testing and actual findings and graphs and visually see it, you can do that on YouTube as well. I think this is going to be maybe episode 15, so um, we'll have to find that. This is going to be the first case review that we're doing. All right, so long story short, person's dealing with low back pain for multiple years. They've been recommended surgery from multiple surgeons. Some say you need it right away. Some have said that they don't need it right away, and we can try things like PT and injections and all that, but they've done all those things. PT didn't help, injections didn't help, and they're really wanting to avoid surgery. So what we're going to do is go and move over to our image here, and when we look at this, I want you to see is that basically this level up here, this is pretty much normal for this individual. Now, interestingly enough, obviously, when we look down, we want to see a straight line basically on the back of the spine here. But when we see this big old bulge, right, or herniation, we have one, two, three, four, five levels of involvement. So at the same time, we're supposed to have a lumbar curve that looks more like this. That's a little extreme, but generally that's kind of what we're looking at. We want this to be more like that, okay? So this individual has multiple disc herniations, multiple disc bulges, multiple disc protrusions. And so by having these on all the levels, we've got our hands full, okay? And so when we look at this stuff, We've got major, major problems, major degenerative changes. 
And we have also towards the bottom here at the bottom of the screen, we've got some stenosis, right? And so stenosis is when the central canal, which essentially, I'll try to get this back up here. So when I, I'll go in green from here to here is the central canal. The yellow part, all this stringy stuff, that's your spinal cord, right? And so when we get down here, this gets really, really tight. And this particular thing has to keep going through there, and then it goes out to the body, say things like the legs. And so this particular individual is having numbness in the legs, in the feet, and also pain in the low back and the buttocks. And so what we know is that discs and joints can refer back into the into the low back and the joints in the spine. Uh, sorry, joints in the in the hips. So, but then at the same time, these discs can be impinging nerves that go down to the feet. So what I'm looking at to help this individual with is going to be to try to reduce the amount of disc bulge and disc herniation and help those discs resorb back into the disc spaces, right? Because what we're going to be doing is decompression for this part of the case and decompression ultimately pulls the spine apart so that you make more space in between here for this disc to move back into essentially the middle of that disc and help to resorb so that we reduce the problems and the burden of the disc on the nerve and we rehabilitate the disc itself leading to decreased pain. All right. So the next thing we're going to look at is actually this individual's neuro exam. So I'm getting, getting ready to show you guys behind the scenes stuff on what we do with patients. And so what we're looking at here is our cogneuro system, which evaluates our eyes. So on the, on the left side of the screen, you're going to be looking at this individual's eyes. Okay, so left side of the screen is the right eye. Right side of the screen is the left eye. This is basically like somebody standing there and looking at you as if they're in front of you. So what we should see, or what we have here, is the red line is the right eye, the blue line is the left eye, and the green line running right through the middle is the target line, which means we want the eyes, or their blue and red lines, to basically be parallel to or overlapping every green line that we have here. The green line is going to change shape for every one of those boxes that say D, G, H, G, V, P, H, and so on. And so each one of those boxes is a different test that's measuring a different part of the brain, right? The reason that we measure the eyes is because it's the only sensory organ that allows us to measure the entire brain. The front of the brain, back of the brain, sides of the brain, vestibular system, cerebellum, and brainstem. And what that means for individuals like this is that if we don't have good eye function, that means parts of the brain and brainstem and cerebellum aren't working or aren't coordinating together, and therefore they're going to lose stability of their spine, leading to these degenerative changes that this individual is having. Okay, So when we look at this, we can tell right away that there are not um, normal eye movements, right? So the next test we look at is called GH or gaze horizontal, and we see squares and see how far off of that green line this particular patient is. So this finding isn't even that bad compared to what we're going to see down the road here. But this person has a really hard time keeping their eyes or moving their eyes to a target and keeping their eyes on a target. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep moving through. And so this, on this top graph, this horizontal movement, I want you guys to watch what the eyes do. They basically shake side to side pretty much the whole time. And then right here, you watch the left eye just fall out completely off the target. And then when they look down, they reacquire that target. And then things improve. So that particular finding tells me that his muscles in his spine fatigue when his eyes fatigue, okay? Then we look at start looking at his cortex and how well he can track a, a slowly moving target, right? So this should be nice and smooth. And as we move back and forth, we should not see any jumps of any kind. So as we're looking at this together, you see all those extra jumps. That is not good at all. That means that the muscles that control the eyes 
they come from basically are, are stimulated by a part of the brainstem that also fires that fires up to the eyes and then fires down to the spine to control spinal muscles, like those really small, uh, tiny muscles that create postural and spurt stabilization. And so these eyes are moving way too much in terms of what I want to be seeing. So as I'm looking at this and I'm talking to this individual, I'm telling them directly that your eye movements are not good and these are very likely contributing to your spine problems, right? So don't get me wrong, by treating the eyes, it doesn't make the spine problems go away because we've got a, chem a, a mechanical disc issue that we need to treat with spinal decompression with a mechanical treatment. At the same time, if we don't do anything, that is going to continue to de degenerate at a pretty significant rate because this person doesn't have any spine muscle stabilization because their neurological system is so out of whack, right? If their eyes tracked perfectly, then I would think that the nervous system isn't as responsible for the spine and things like dropping or carrying or falling or having car accidents are going to be the major cause of that spinal trauma. So we're going to move forward to this SH. This SH test is basically a test that measures how the front part of the brain coordinates with the cerebellum and brainstem. And what we should see is this perfectly square green line Right, And so I'm actually going to blow this up for us so we can see it a little bit better. So you guys can see that green line there, right? That is the red lines and blue lines are all freaking over the place, right? So this they're, they're way overshooting. They don't even know where this target is. And this target's literally just jumping back and forth on a screen in front of them. So with these eye movements being so stinking erratic, what do you think the spine muscles are doing? right? This is something that we call the cervical ocular reflex, the COR. So when we move our eye muscles, our neck muscles and spine muscles are also going to fire to help us turn our head, look at, a, look at an object, or specifically look for something that might be a threat to our, our nervous system or our body, right? So this is going to be part of that high alert system that helps us search for problems and find them accurately. But with this type of eye movement, capacity or the inability to move your eyes accurately and on time, there is no doubt in my mind that if we work on strengthening this person's eye movements and their brain, that they're going to deal with less pain and have more function in their life. That is without a doubt um, a complex application to this treatment for this patient. So we're going to do I would recommend things like spinal decompression for the lumbar spine, and we're going to shoot for the, the biggest problem areas, right? We'll probably shoot for that L4-5 region that we were just looking at here where some of that stenosis is. And then also maybe that L2, L3, we'll target that as well because we've got so many levels involved. We kind of go for the middle and choose the biggest problem and address that first. Then we can move to more of the low-hanging fruit after that to help clean that up. So I love to see what we're doing here. Um, I, I'm really excited to see what this patient will look like at the end, but also we're going to look back at another case that we worked with um, that we were actually able to help them also avoid spinal uh, surgery. So this individual came in um, roughly a year ago, uh, maybe a year and a half ago, and they had surgery scheduled three weeks after we had met. So they were already gone down, all the PT, the injections, the chiropractic, they tried decomp, they tried laser, they tried um, acupuncture, they tried dry needling, they tried the injections, they tried everything that you can think of. And all they wanted to do was avoid surgery because their, their mom had gotten surgery and it ruined her life even more than the problem requiring surgery. So what we're looking at here is an L4-5 massive disc herniation. This caused problems down the right leg, pain, tingling, numbness, burning down into that right, right ankle and foot. And so we worked on this person and, and did decompression every day for two weeks. And at the beginning of that third week, they told us that they had never slept better in their life and when they had this. And they had actually pushed back their surgical date from, say, November to maybe February. 
Okay, so fast forward about four months when we got done treating this problem, this patient was completely asymptomatic, right? So if I kind of blow this up a little bit, we're looking at that massive disc herniation. By the end of this treatment program, this patient was completely asymptomatic. They were back to working out. They were back to hanging out with their family, going up the stairs, down the stairs without any issues whatsoever. And what we're looking at now is the updated MRI that shows almost complete resorption of that herniation. And this is all with non-surgical spinal decompression. So what this table does is it basically straps you in around your hips and straps you in around your ribs and gently, very gently pulls apart. And it works with basically things like accelerometers, meaning that when you spasm and you can feel it, or if you tighten up, the pull actually decreases to match the amount of pull that we want. And so we program this pull so that you can feel it properly and it gets the job done, but it's so gentle that you don't usually feel any pain whatsoever. All right, so now we're gonna go back to me on screen and, and ultimately kind of talk, show you guys what it's doing, right? So as we strap people in, I mean, we actually pull up to like six to 12 inches apart to try to get all those spinal discs to rehabilitate, okay? And so when we do that over and over and over, over the course of two to four months, depending on how serious the case is, we usually have phenomenal results in decrease in low back pain, increase in function, increase in mobility, and then we part of our program is actually strengthening and rehabilitation with other electrical devices, right? We use low-level laser therapy to decrease inflammation and promote more blood flow to the area so that the spine can actually heal. We use laser on brain and gut if you have those uh, like neurological issues associated with it. Like that first case we just reviewed with all those neurological findings, without a doubt, we're going to use laser on the brain. The flip side to that is laser PEMF, which can be full body mat or localized ring therapy so that we get more anti-inflammatory effects, more blood flow, and we get more tissue healing. Then if anybody is, say, a high-stress individual or these chronic pain patients are usually stressing out because nobody feels good when they're in pain, we use vagal nerve stimulation right behind the ear and we hit the auricular branch that helps the, the rest and digest system kick in. It physically stimulates the vagus nerve, and that helps to calm down the whole system. Whether you have anxiety, heavy stress, or you're just not in a place to be able to heal properly, like in chronic pain situations, we always use vagal nerve stimulation to help with that. And the last thing, which is newest to the office, we use red light therapy that pulses 250,000 times a second to hit the retina, and we start uh, making neurochemical changes, neuro logical changes within the autonomic system to calm the whole system down. So basically you're sitting in there for 20 minutes with vagal nerve stem, laser therapy on your tissue and your brain, pulse PEMF light, or sorry, PEMF therapy that you're sitting on and your body's absorbing this electrical therapy or magnetic therapy to help calm inflammation and restore blood flow. And then lastly, you're actually absorbing red light into your retina. All of this is happening at the same time, and almost every single patient reports being more relaxed, feeling better, feeling calmer, and having less pain every time they walk out of the office because of this. Now, when we do these programs, we do this over the course of months with multiple visits of during the week. So just think about feeling good every time you leave, and the more you attend, the more work we get done, the longer it lasts, and the more permanent it becomes. So... I wanted to review this case to show you guys how things start and compare them to how things have ended for other patients before. So if this sounds like something that you might be interested in, just give the office a call. We can do a consultation, talk your case over before we say yay or nay. This sounds like something we can help. Um, myself or even Dr. Rachel can have that con consultation with you. And then we can decide together if this is the right course of treatment for you because we don't we don't make these dictations. We, what we do is we work together with the patient. We help guide you. This is a team effort. We help you learn so that you can have the tools you need to basically sustain your own life and your health the rest of your life. 
All right. So if you guys have any questions, I well, first, thank you for listening to this podcast. I know it's kind of a short and sweet one, but I really wanted to review this case with you. I thought hopefully uh, you got something out of it. Um, make sure you check out all the other episodes if you haven't already, and stay tuned for the following episodes. Uh, we're going to have a lot of cool guests coming up, and um, I'm just really excited to share it with all you guys. So again, thank you. This is Dr. Teams signing off the Neuro Reset Podcast. We'll see you next time.